Shabbat Shalom to each and every one on this beautiful Sabbath day. Special greetings to mom and thanking Yahweh that mom has been granted another, another day of life and all of us feel the same way. That Yahweh has blessed us with another day of life and another day to serve him, the only true and living Elohim. The title to the message today is Keeping It Together When Everything Is Falling Apart. We live in a time such as we have never witnessed before, yet Yahshua the Messiah and the prophets and the patriarchs of old have warned us of the imminent judgment from Yahweh, yet so few have paid attention. Have you made a straight path for your feet? Or have you focused on pleasing yourself and living life to the fullest? Let's begin with Jeremiah 25, and verse 3. Jeremiah 25, 3 through 7. From the 13th year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even to this day, these 23 years the word of Yahweh has come to me, and I have spoken to you, rising up early and speaking, but you have not listened. And Yahweh has sent to you all his servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, but you have not listened, nor inclined your ear to hear, saying, Return now, every one from his evil way and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land of Yahweh. The land that Yahweh has given to you and to your fathers, from of old even forevermore. And go not after other Elohim and serve them and to worship them and to provoke me not to anger with the work of your hands, for I will, for, and I will do you no hurt. Yet you have not listened to me, says Yahweh, that you may provoke me to anger with the work of your hands to your own hurt. <clears throat> but will we receive instruction? Just drop down to verse 12, and it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation says Yahweh for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and I will make it desolate forever and I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it even all that is written in this book which Jeremiah has prophesied against all the nations look at what happened to Babylon Babylon is soon to fall brethren and sisters will you Prepare yourself for this judgment to fall from uh, Almighty Yahweh. And then in Jeremiah 35, 12, and they came to pass, uh, then came the word of Yahweh to Jeremiah saying, in this manner says Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, go and say to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, will you not receive instruction and listen to my words? Will we receive instruction and listen to the words? Will you not receive instruction to listen to my words, says Yahweh? And then down in verse 14, the last part of the verse, But I have spoken to you, rising up early and speaking, and you have not listened to me. And I have sent also to you all my servants, the prophets rising up early and sending them, saying, Return now, every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other Elohim to serve them. And you shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers, but you have not inclined your ear nor listened to me. And then in verse 17, Therefore thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, behold, I will bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken to them, but they have not heard, and I have called to them, and they have not answered. And then, continuing this thought in Jeremiah 44, beginning with verse 4, Jeremiah 44, 4, However, I sent to you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. 
Yet who is listening when this call has gone out for decades? Who is listening? But they listen not, it says at the beginning of verse 5. This applies to all of the abominations that the human race persists in. Three major events took place 55 years ago in 1969, the summer of 1969. The Stonewall Riots on June 28, beginning on June 28, when the New York City Police Department went in to enforce the law against sodomy. And that gave way to the homosexual movement that has defiled this nation even to this day. And then Woodstock, a licentious music festival in, coincidentally, Bethel, New York, later in August. But in the middle of this, the most important event that took place was on July 8, 1969, when the Assemblies of Yahweh Charter was approved. As this nation cast off restraint and the norms of living based loosely on keeping of the Ten Commandments and the laws of Almighty Yahweh, what was taboo is now accepted today. This nation has become so corrupt since that time, yet the warnings upon this nation began three and a half years earlier, roughly, when Elder Jacob O'Meyer began to cry out against sin over the airwaves of this nation. But look at Baltimore. Baltimore has become one of America's most crime-ridden cities, and so has Philadelphia. This week, Waterloo, Iowa was one of the cities in Iowa that were desolated by this week's flood. It's not a rain, it's just not rain in due season, brethren. Yet Elder Meyer's voice was heard there beginning 55 years ago to little avail. One member, one in Iowa. Fires in California, New Mexico, and Arizona this month, a coincidence? No, Yahweh is speaking to a deaf and blind nation. Yet the number 55 shows double grace to those who hear, and hopefully, and there will be those who will hear. And there are those who are filled with uh, righteous indignation, with it, which is what is happening. What better way to follow up a disastrous debate Thursday evening than to go and open up a museum for the Stonewall riots in New York City. Well, Yahweh will see to it. Proverbs 16, 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Yet they have seized on this word pride. This word pride in, in uh, is number 34, uh, 1347 Gaon. Yet they have declared this month to be Pride Month. But look at the judgment that Yahweh has been pouring out upon this nation during this month of June. Is it just a, a coincidence? I, I don't think it is. In verse 2 of chapter 16, All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but Yahweh weighs the spirits. Commit your works to Yahweh and your purposes shall be established. This is the teshuva that Yahweh is requiring and calling upon us and all this, all the human race to turn back to him again. This is the message of WMLK. Fear Yahweh and give him glory for his judgment is soon to fall. Yahweh had, has made everything for its own end. Yes, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to Yahweh. So all of this pride of today, yes, it's an abomination to Yahweh. All of the proud in heart because they flaunt sin and completely reject Yahweh's word. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. And you can uh, be assured that those words of Yahweh will be fulfilled. Yes, the majority may rush, as Yahshua has said, down a broad way that goes to destruction, but they shall not be unpunished. Yahweh is going to bring punishments upon this generation, and ultimately all of us must stand before the judgment seat of Yahshua the Messiah. By mercy and truth, iniquity is atoned for, 
And by the fear of Yahweh, men depart from evil. And that's what's going to happen with those that respond to the fulfillment of the Great Commission in these end times. They'll turn away with great zeal, turn to Yahweh, and turn away from sin. When a man's ways please Yahweh, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues with injustice. Yeah, look at the stock market. You know, when Elder Meyer said that following the 08 crash, that it's going to come back bigger, I, yeah, I thought maybe, you know, 20,000, almost 40,000. Wow, with great revenues, yet what has happened since then? Great injustices are taking place. This nation has become so evil. A man's heart devises his way, but Yahweh directs his steps. A righteous decision is in the lips of, a, of the king. His mouth shall not transgress in judgment. A just balance and scales are Yahweh's. All the weights of the bag are his work. It is abomination to kings to commit wickedness. Well, think world leaders. Yeah, we don't have a king in America, but we still have a, installed him into a position, the president and all of these nobles that rule this nation, the unelected bureaucrats, congressmen, senators, mayors, so on and so forth. It's an abomination for all of these people to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness, and it should be. But it's not, sadly, it's not. And then verses 16 and 17, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold? Yes, to get understanding is rather to be chosen than silver. But yet this nation has sought, uh, greed is everywhere, theft is just abundant and unpunished. You can steal and they just ignore the fact and this has caused so many businesses to go out of business or to leave a city because of the rampant theft. Have you seen how many, how many things are locked up at the supermarkets because of the theft, even in this area? Yeah, it's obvious. Verse 17, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keeps his way preserves his soul. And then the scripture that really brings it forth is Proverbs 8.13. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. Now if you fear Yahweh, you're going to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way. Pride. That word, and it's not coincidence, that word, 1344, is Gaia. Now, can you see the connection between gay and pride that was, has been pushed forward, especially, I believe, by Jewish homosexuals that started there in New York City and then moved to the West Coast, like Harvey Milk, is just a man that's just so beloved by the left? Jewish homosexuals, I don't think it's coincidental that they could hijack a term that was used to be referred to as happiness and joy. Now they call the whole month Pride Month. Well, the fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. If we fear Yahweh, we must hate all evil. And we must be working on our salvation with fear and trembling because we cannot allow evil. It starts with us. We control our lives. And we need to be working on our salvation with fear and trembling to rid our lives of all evil. And to identify this pride that's so, so uh, uh, prevalent today. And Yahweh has been brought and he will bring judgment upon this nation and the nations of the world because of their pride. Pride, arrogancy in the evil way and the perverse mouth. You know, as, as, as I've said, here are women and children that somehow served in the, in the Navy because they swear like sailors. It, I cannot understand how this nation has gone from what it used to be to this today. And yet this is now the new norm that we're supposed to accept. 
but we cannot accept it as we reject it. And so therefore, we must stand firm on the word of Almighty Yahweh. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 9, the show of their countenance does witness against them. They declare their sin is Sodom. They hide it not. Woe to their soul, for they have done evil to themselves. And this is perhaps the inspiration for Paul to use the phrase, the, the phrase uh, about men uh, abusing uh, abusers of themselves with men, for they have done evil to themselves. Say to the righteous, it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Do we understand that whatever we do, we will eat the fruit of our doings, whether good fruit or bad fruit? Yahshua spoke so much about that. John the Baptist did. The apostles, the disciples, and the apostles did. Make the tree good and the fruit good. They'll eat the fruit of their doings. Woe to the wicked, it shall be ill with him. For what his hands have done, it shall be done to him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they that lead you cause you to err. Yes, the leaders of this nation from top to bottom have caused this nation to err. And Elder Meyer uh, put the finger on the religious establishment that has permitted this because they have taught a no-law doctrine, and what do you get from a no-law doctrine? You get anarchy, you get lasciviousness, so on and so forth. O oh, my people, they that lead you cause you to err and destroy the way of your paths. And Yahweh stands up to contend and stands to judge the peoples. Yahweh will enter into judgment with the elders of, this, of his people and the princes of it. It is you that have eaten up the vineyard. The plunder of the poor is in your houses. Look at what's happening. And Jacob spoke about this. We have so much oppression. We are importing a class of people into this nation to be slaves, to work, to be underpaid, and to be worked day and night. But we've also imported into this nation an army that during the beast will be the, the army of the beast to uh, do whatever the beast wishes. Think about that. When people are starving and you give them food and shelter and then you say, now you do this. Yes, this is what is happening and has happened to our nation. The plunder of the poor is in your houses. And Jacob spoke of the, how you rich how and they're gonna how what do you mean that you crush my people and grind the face of the poor says the sovereign Yahweh of hosts yes people are trying the sincere ones that are coming here are trying to make a better life for themselves and what is happening to them how many children are now being uh, brought into uh, human trafficking and sexual slavery and yet they're just allowing this to happen no one it seems, sadly, is speaking up and saying, stop, stop. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 2, Hear, O you heaven, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For Yahweh has spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. That's what's happened to this nation. They have rebelled against Yahweh. And then they flaunt their sins by declaring it a pride month. Or the woman, the mother, and, and her mother, a grandmother, a, a woman who is a widow, and her baby kicked off of a United Airlines flight this week because she misgendered someone. So, and it's coming out of San Francisco. What's the pilot going to do? It's up to the pilot to make that decision. Do you think he's going to stand up for what's right and what's wrong? No, maybe he's involved with it as well. No? Boot her off the flight because she said, yes, sir. You know, that happened at the Feast of Tabernacles when I was a kid. You know, Elder Meyer was on us. We have to say, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. And this woman said something to me, and, and just without thinking, I said, yes, sir. Excuse me? Yeah. She <laughs> and it's like, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. 
well, well, that'll get you kicked off a flight today and threatened to be banned from flying with uh, United for the rest of her life. Going on, verse 3, the ox knows his owner and the ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know, my people does not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people loaded with iniquity. That describes not just this nation, but all of the nations of the world, loaded with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children who deal corruptly. They have forsaken Yahweh. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. Yeah, they do that by rejecting the commandments of Yahweh. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are estranged and gone backward. Why will you still be stricken that you revolt more and more? The whole head is sick. The heads of the nations from the unelected bureaucrats to the elected leaders of the world. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint from the sole of the foot to the head. There's no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and fresh stripes. They have not been closed, neither bound up nor mollified with oil. Your country is desolate, your cities burn with fire, your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Yes, yeah, some of those strangers coming in, you would think it would be sojourners that Yahweh would love, but yet some of these people that are coming in are terrorists, and then they lose track of them. Where did they go? Where well, they're laying in wait, waiting for the right time, sadly. And the daughter of Zion is left as a booth in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except Yahweh of hosts had let us a very, have left to us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom. We should have been like Gomorrah. Think about that. A very small remnant. Abraham negotiated the delivery of Sodom, if there were only 10 righteous found there. But they were not. It was not 10 people, 10 righteous individuals there. So we all know what happens. Yes, pride goes before destruction and destruction, 7, 6, 6, 7, to break in pieces. It's a PL that's intensive, imperfect, action not yet completed, Third masculine singular. Yes, action is not yet completed because destruction is coming. A, hardy, a haughty spirit before a fall. Yes, Babylon is soon to fall. Brethren and sisters, and WMLK must and will announce the fall of Babylon from, again, double grace, Psalm 55. Give ear, to my peop give ear to my prayer, O Elohim, and hide not yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint and moan because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me. Yeah, now what's good is bad, and bad is good, exactly as George Orwell said. Now they cast iniquity upon us. You're the bad guy. You're the keeper of the commandments. You're the bad guy. For they cast iniquity upon me, and in anger they persecute me. Yeah, you've seen this vile anger today. They arrested that guy that was there on the subway in New York saying, Any Zionists on board? Identify yourselves. Well, they arrested him. And I thought to myself, I can call myself a Mount Zionist because Yahshua the Messiah is coming to set up the kingdom of Yahweh and he's going to rule from Mount Zion. So I can call myself a Mount Zionist because the kingdom is coming and I want to be there. We all want to be there, don't we? My heart is severely pained within me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me and horror has overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, that I would fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off. I would lodge in the wilderness, Selah. I would hasten myself to a shelter from the stormy wind and tempest. Destroy, O Yahweh, and divide their tongue, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Yes, the cities are filled with violence and strife. Day and night they go about it upon the walls of it. Iniquity also and mischief are in the middle of it. Wickedness is in the middle of it. Oppression and guile depart not from its streets. 
Yes, this is what's happening in this world today. In verse 15, judgment is coming. Let death come suddenly upon them. Let them go down alive into Sheol. For wickedness is in their dwelling, in the middle of them. As for me, I will call upon Elohim and Yahweh will save me. What do we do? How do we keep it together when everything is falling apart? Well, we double down in our uh, obedience to the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. We can uh, look at uh, the book of Habakkuk, the first chapter. O oh, Yahweh, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? I cry out to you of violence, and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and look upon perverseness? For destruction and violence are before me, and there is strife and contention rises up. Therefore the law is slack. That's what's happened to this nation and the nations of the world. Not only have they slacked in the keeping of Yahweh's law, they have slacked in the, uh, the institution of justice and enforcing the law of the land. Therefore the law is slacked and justice does never go forth, for the wicked does compass about the righteous, therefore justice goes forth perverted. Yeah, we have uh, a, a perverted justice today. Behold you among the nations, behold you among the nations, and look and wonder marvelously, for I am working a work in your days which you will not believe, though it is told to you. Think about what Yahweh is working. Verse 12, Are you not from everlasting, O Yahweh, my Elohim, my Holy One? We shall not die, O Yahweh. You have ordained him for judgment. And you, O Rock, have established him for correction. You that are of purer eyes than to behold evil, and that cannot look, upon per, look on perverseness. Why do you look upon them that deal treacherously and hold not your peace from the wicked, when the wicked swallow up the man that is more righteous than he and makes men as fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them, he takes up all them with the hook. He catches them in his net. He gathers them in his drag. Therefore, he rejoices and is glad. Therefore, he sacrifices to the net and burns incense to his drag because by them his portion is fat and his food Plenteous. Shall he therefore empty his net and spare not to kill the nations continually? I will stand upon my watch and set, set me upon the tower and I will look forth to see. And that's what we're doing. We're looking forth to see. Because we're seeing these things coming and I hope that you are seeing these things coming and taking place. And then... Turn the page to verse 15. Woe to him that gives his neighbor drink to you that add, add your venom and make him drunken also that you may look upon their nakedness. It's exactly, there's so much of this uh, foolishness going on and especially with little children. You're filled with shame and not glory. You drink also and be not as one uncircumcised. The cup of Yahweh's right hand shall come around to you and, and foul shame shall be upon your glory. Yes, Yahweh is going to bring judgment and they're all going to drink of the wrath of Yahweh as Yahweh's law uh, is, and Yahweh's prophets and prophecies have indicated. <clears throat> what shall Yahweh do upon such a nation as this? Would not Yahweh judge? And he will judge. Just because he's holding back, he knows the end from the beginning. He's holding back because he knows that there are people that he's going to bring to the fold. Then once that has been accomplished, then judgments will fall. In Jeremiah, the fifth chapter. As it says here in uh, verse 3, O Yahweh, do not look your eyes, do not your eyes look upon, look upon truth. You have struck them, but they were not grieved. 
You've consumed them, but they have, not, they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. How can I pardon you? Verse 7, your children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no Elohim. And when I had fed them to the full, they committed adultery and assembled themselves in troops at the harlot's houses. They were as fed horses roaming at large. Every one neighed after his neighbor's wife. Or husband, you might even say, sadly. Verse 9, shall I not visit for these things, says Yahweh? And shall not my soul be avenged? On such a nation as this? That's a very probing question. Should not Yahweh, and you know Yahweh is going to judge. Is not Yahweh going to judge and judge very severely as he uh, go to chapter 9? Verse 7, therefore, well, you could say uh, at the end of verse well, in verse 3, and they bend the tongue, as it were, the bow for falsehood. That's what's happening today. And they have grown strong in the land, but not for truth. They proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, says Yahweh. Take heed, every one of his neighbor, and trust not in any brother, for every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will go about with slanders. Yeah, that's what's happening through uh, social media and... and uh, the poison tongue in the, t in the fingertips. And they shall deceive every man his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. They have wearied themselves to commit iniquity. Yeah, if the people would only work to do good things, but yet it's so easy to uh, train yourself and learn to do evil. Your habitation is in the middle of deceit. Though deceit through deceit, they refuse to know me, says Yahweh. Therefore, thus says Yahweh of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how else should I do because of the daughter of my people? Their tongue is a deadly arrow. It speaks deceit. No one speaks peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in his heart he lays wait for him. Shall I not visit them for these things, says Yahweh? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? The answer, of course, is yes. Yahweh is soon going to uh, shake this earth mightily. The shedding of innocent blood is an abomination to Yahweh. And Jeremiah, the second chapter, speaks of the, uh, innocent, uh, the innocent blood in Jeremiah 2, 34, also in your skirts is found the blood of the souls of the innocent poor. You didn't find them breaking in, but it's because of all these things. Yet you said, I am innocent. Surely his anger is turned away from me. Behold, I will enter into judgment with you because you say, I have not sinned. Since Roe v. Wade was overturned, abortion hit the highest in a decade. How can that be? Since the Dobbs decision by the U.S. government, Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court, abortion increased. How can that be? Will not Yahweh punish this nation? And yet you see so many instances where Yahweh is pouring out his wrath. Zechariah 12. Three, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will make Jerusalem a burdensome, burden, burdensome stone for all peoples. All that burden themselves with it shall be severely wounded, and all the nations of the earth shall be gathered together against it. Think of that. I thought of that. Elder Meyer mentioned everybody's going to turn against Israel. I thought, how can that be? The United States surely would not. But yet you see that a very interesting thing is has taken place. Just take uh, most uh, recently, <clears throat> the State of the Union address in March, Biden announced that the US military would build a Gaza pier. Then he stated, as we look to the future, the only real solution is a two-state solution. 
There is no other path, quote, there is no other path that guarantees Israel's security and democracy. There is no other path that guarantees Palestinians to live with peace and dignity. What a foolish statement because the very Palestinian charter, the Hamas charter, all of these nations that hate Israel have themselves entered into a bond to destroy the, na the nation of Israel. Now, it's so beloved by the left throughout our college campuses and uh, people all over the world have come out as anti-Semites supporting the Hamas terrorists. It's interesting that that pier is designed to be in seas of less than three meters. And yet every time the sea whips up, and we all know that Mediterranean Sea has how many, Yahweh knows, dead people in it through the centuries, through the millennia? The Apostle Paul himself shipwrecked how many times? Blown clear from Crete to Malta. And that's where they struck the shore, Melita, also known as Malta. And yet, a $320 million pier damaged, sinking. Now there's a, an investigation going on within the Pentagon. They knew this. They knew it would not work in high seas, but yet they did it anyway. And what's interesting is the things that they brought aboard, Hamas commandeered, stole. It didn't go to the poor as it was supposed to. Instead, it's stolen by Hamas. Hamas takes it and then sells it to the uh, Gazan Palestinians uh, and at a profit. Yes, we're uh, in uh, a very uh, precarious situation, brethren and sisters. In May, Biden, at a commencement address, said, I'm working to make sure we finally get a two-state solution, the only solution for two people. Jake uh, Sullivan, that same day, was meeting with Bibi Netanyahu, having just come from talks with cr the crown prince and, and the prime minister of Saudi Arabia. And what happened that same week? Well, the pier was destroyed. So rough seas came and uh, destroyed that pier. The timing, uh, interestingly, in March, the uh, United Nations Security Council passed a, revolution, a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Israel's war on Hamas. It was the duty of the United States to veto that. We stepped back and did not. The next day, the very next day, the ship hit the bridge in Baltimore. Now, is that just a coincidence? I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. But it's very interesting. Is Yahweh judging this nation? And who's seeing it, sadly? Regarding Gaza, George Bush pressured Prime Minister Ariel Sharon back in 05 to hand over the Gaza, the Gaza Strip to the Palestinians. This is what was said by George W. Bush, August 23, 2005. Um, Well, it says the evacuations of the Jewish settlements were completed on August 23. And then Bush said, was it the same day? I'm not sure. I want to congratulate Prime Minister Sharon for making, having made a very tough decision, George Bush said. This is uh, George W. Bush. The Prime Minister made a courageous decision to withdraw from Gaza. The same day, it's the same day that Hurricane Katrina formed. But it's not just that, because Hurricane Katrina, Katrina came barreling into New Orleans on that weekend that they had all of this uh, homosexual, they had a homosexual uh, event going on. Well, we all know uh, how that many people uh, died, says uh, 1,800, perhaps 1,800 people dead, 200 billion nearly in, in damage. Very interesting. In 2002, the Bush administration joined with Russia, the European Union, uh, to facilitate a Mideast peace negotiations. 
and uh, the day after the, the um, roadmap was delivered was the beginning of the biggest tornado season in the United States. 434 tornadoes sighted in the Midwest in the first 10 days of May of 2003. Just a coincidence, maybe it's just a coincidence. And then in 2003, Europe, the summer of 03, then experienced the hottest temperatures uh, in uh, hundreds of years. And they say with the possibility of at least 30,000 deaths. Is Yahweh judging? Yes, I think Yahweh is judging. Are these just coincidences? Maybe, maybe so. But think about floods in the Corn Belt of Iowa. Think about 500,000 acres of cropland in Idaho being taken, uh, being told that their irrigation water will be cut off starting Monday, July 1. And this is a predominantly potato growing area. And uh, what is the reason for that? Why would you wait till after the farmers had planted the fields, investing hundreds of uh, dollars per acre to uh, prepare and plant the fields, and then you're going to cut them off so that the crop is destroyed? But yet this week, Denmark announced that it is going to uh, begin to tax every cow in Denmark, uh, roughly uh, what is a value of $100 US per cow. And uh, also this week, Finland started avian flu vaccines. What's interesting, remember again, the avian flu vaccine is a leaky vaccine and the US government studies have showed this. But if you look back to the, I think it was the July of 1984 issue of the Sacred Name Broadcaster, Elder Meyer, uh, highlighted what happened to the Fred Wright family nearby here in Bethel during that avian flu outbreak. His flocks were not sick. They had antibodies. And the government came in and killed every one of them. And he had strains of, uh, of uh, fowl. Uh, what he did is he had these special breeds of uh, birds then he would keep breeding pairs and then hatch their eggs and, and then ship the uh, chicks out around, out of the Bethel Post Office. Go used to go into the Bethel Post Office and hear all these uh, chicks chirping as they were going out through the mails. Well, avian flu now, and I don't think it's, it's just accidental, I think it's by design, now is being infected into cattle. And uh, because of this, now they're going to plan to do uh, vaccinations and they're planning it here as well. But that's also going to take meat and milk and chicken, perhaps eventually, off of the market. But yet that's what these people want. They want us to eat bugs and uh, lab-grown meat, which is not going to be the case. So what do we do, keeping it together when everything else is falling apart? Well, Psalm 91.1 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes, we have to keep it together, and we do so by keeping Yahweh's commandments more diligently. And uh, this, of course, should encourage us from uh, Isaiah 26, when Yahweh's judgments come, Isaiah 26, 20, come, my people, enter into your chambers and shut your doors about you. Hide yourself for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, Yahweh comes forth out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. What do we do? How do we keep it together? Well, we do so by drawing closer to Yahweh. Philippians 4, 6, And nothing be anxious, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to Yahweh. And verse 13, I can do all things in him that strengthens me. Yahweh is looking to see who 
is sighing and crying because of the wickedness of this age, as you can see in Ezekiel, the ninth chapter. Ezekiel 9. Go through the middle of the city, through the middle of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry over all the abominations that are done in the middle of it. Well, for us, we are sighing and crying because of the abominations that are being promoted all over the world. Yahshua the Messiah said in his Olivet Prophecy, verse 25 of Luke 21, 25 to 28, And there shall be signs in sun and moon and stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, in perplexity for the roaring of the sea and the billows, men feigning for fear and for expectation of the things that are coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming with cloud and power and great glory. But when these things begin to come to pass, brethren, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. So be uh, very much encouraged. Follow what Paul said to the Romans in Romans 12.21. Do not be uh, overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And then in uh, Revelation, have patience, brethren and sisters. So how do we keep ourselves? By patiently serving Almighty Yahweh. Re Revelation 14.12. Here is the patience of the saints. They that keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith of Yahshua. When Yahshua comes, will he find us still faithful? Keep the commandments, brethren. Keep the faith. And that is how we keep it together when everything else is falling apart all around us. May Yahweh bless you.